wow, well, would you look at that haircut? It's looking pretty good. I'm happy about it. What's up guys, welcome to another video. Let me put some gloves on. And I really just mean one glove because I only wear one glove when I drive. Why? I'll show you in just a second. First, let's turn on the air conditioner because I am parked now and I want that fresh, cool air. This is a slightly funny video because I actually want to take back something that I said in a previous video. And the video is called Why I Would Pick Babolat Over Yonex. And in that video, I said this. Babolat is a step above other companies because... Now, I'm not saying Yonex. I'm saying everybody else but Yonex. Babolat is a step above other companies in the sense that they actually offer the ability to buy matched rackets, okay? So my understanding at the time was that those Babolat rackets that were matched were actually matched, but it turns out there's a little bit more fine print. So I'm gonna look into that right now. Let's do this research together. So I am going to go to their website to make sure that I didn't say anything wrong. And it turns out that I kind of did, but I don't know if it's entirely my fault. And it might be, but let's see. All right, I want you guys to see what I'm seeing. Let's take you off of here. Hello, welcome to the car. All right, we're on the Babolat website. And how did I get to this before? I swear that they just sold pairs. Page two, come on, and I, oh, there it is, 98X2. Yeah, here we go. Okay, you know what? This is what got me last time. The Babolat Pure Aero 98 Tennis Racket X2 is sold as a matched pair with a maximum weight difference of one gram. That's what screwed me. Because when Babolat says matched pair, I assume they mean matched. And in addition to being matched, they are also just one gram apart. Now it turns out that's really where the similarities are no longer true. The rackets might be no more than a gram apart. They actually don't say anything about balance or swing weight, etc. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Maybe matched is kind of a malleable word. But the thing is, like, anybody using the word matched, at least on my channel or in the consumer tennis community that cares enough to watch things like racket reviews and so on, I would say that on the professional retail end, matched rackets means that the swing weight and the balance and the weight, etc., are all matched within a very, very, very small tolerance, as in close to perfect, but not actually perfect. So when you have a racket that's matched in terms of weight, but not anything else, that doesn't mean anything. Two rackets that weigh the same could have a different balance and therefore wildly different swing weights. And in some ways, it's almost more inconvenient if the rackets are weight matched and then not matched in any other way because the only way to make a racket truly matched is to play around with the weight. And if the weight's already the same, then it takes away a lot of what differences I can make up here and there. So that's really frustrating to me that Babolat would use the word matched and sell a pair of rackets as matched by their definition. Now I'm really conscious of this glove. <laughs> but I'm not trying to get fingerprints on my screen. That's why I wear one glove, in case you're wondering. There's really no point in doing that. There's no meaningful reason to buy two rackets that weigh the same if everything else is allowed to vary. There's no point. And that's what I wanted to say in this video because in that video, you already saw that clip because I edited it in by now. I said that was another reason I would pick Babolat over Yonix because a lot of people make the argument that Yonix's quality control is a good enough reason alone or at least a good enough reason on top of other reasons they might prefer Yonix to be the reason they would choose Yonix over Babolat. And just so we're clear, I said this in my comments on that video later, I was looking at the silver lining of Babolat having some variance in their rackets because I genuinely do feel it's nice that some Babolat rackets are a little heavier or a little bit lighter. Some have a higher swing weight, some have a low swing weight of the same exact model because this is the silver lining. Now, I'm not saying this is like good marketing, but someone like me has the tools to measure all these little differences and someone like me has the nerve and the access to go into a tennis shop and pick from a pile of like 15 rackets and select from that pile of 15 two rackets or whatever amount I want that most closely match the specs I prefer. Whereas with Yonex rackets, it almost doesn't matter how many Yonex rackets you go through of the same model, they're almost all gonna be the same. So if you really want this one racket but you just happen to wish that it was a little bit lower in swing weight, maybe you're not going to find that. Whereas with Babolat, you probably will because the variance in swing weight for Babolat, at least in my experience, has been like 15, 20 units sometimes, which is a lot. That's really big. Same for Head, same for Wilson, pretty much same for everybody that isn't Yonix. So let's get to the next part of the video where I actually go to Courtside Tennis, which is my affiliate shop, and I measure three Yonix E-Zone 98s. I measure their swing weight. And I'm going in there actually expecting that they will vary a bit, maybe more, 
Maybe not as much as the Babolats will, but probably at least half as much as that. That's what I went in expecting. So it's a really short clip, but watch what happens. So we got three E-Zones here. They're all four and three eighths grip size, just randomly grabbed off the shelf. No particular order, just random, which is really the goal of this thing. And we're gonna measure each of these twice. So that's the first measurement of the first racket. I do it again, right here. And it's basically the same. Do the second one. Yeah, 283. And the third one. Yep, and those are, those are the numbers. It's really, really close. That's matched. That is a matched racket randomly off the shelf. Incredible. All right, now you've seen that, which means I was wrong. But I genuinely feel misled by Babolat. I really thought Babolat meant matched in the way that I mean matched when I say it and when any of us say it. Now, I want to make this clear. It doesn't mean that I would now choose Yonex over Babolat, but this is what I said in the comments. I don't want to make it sound like I prefer this weird quality control discrepancy in terms of a racket's specs from Babylon. I don't like prefer that, but I do see the silver lining and I can take advantage of that. And when you can, it can be kind of a nice thing. More often than not, in my case, most rackets are too light. So I actually want something a little heavier with a little higher swing weight than marketed. So for me, it's actually nice to go in and buy a racket where I don't have to put on as much lead tape, or maybe I don't have to put on any. But here's the thing. I was wrong. And I always want to keep it honest with you guys. I'm not here to mislead anybody intentionally ever. And I think after watching this video, you will see that it's pretty reasonable that I was misled because of the way that Babolat phrases their matched racket disclaimer. I mean, it's not even a disclaimer. It just says sold as a matched pair with a maximum weight difference of one gram. To me, that just sounds like it's matched. And on top of that, they have a maximum weight difference of one gram. Great. They could have worded that sentence in a way that would never be misinterpreted. They could say, just say it's sold as a pair with a maximum weight difference of one gram. Just say that, don't say it's a matched pair with a weight difference of no more than one gram. Like that's different. That's totally different. That being said, I still have to choose Babolat over Yonix because the Babolats are just more my style of racket than the Yonixes were. I made that point earlier. I don't like the crooked crosses that I see on Yonix rackets, but even beyond that, there just wasn't one that felt quite right. I really like the Pure Arrow 98, guys. Really, really like it. But this is what I said in the comments. My goodness, it took me forever to get to this. I said, because I do appreciate quality control, I said, you know what would be really nice? Because people are thinking I'm shilling this Babolat racket. I'm not. And I'm undermining the meaning of the Yonex quality control. What I was trying to say was, just because Yonex rackets are closer to spec on average, much closer, I don't necessarily think that means it's a more durable racket or that it's gonna last longer. I'm certainly not saying that it means it's not gonna last longer. If anything, maybe the Yonex will last longer. Maybe it actually is manufactured with higher quality materials. I don't know that. All I know is that they somewhere, somehow take more time or have more precision in the way that they make their rackets so that the specs are closer. But here's what I said. I said in the comments, it would be nice if Yonex made the Babolat Pure Aero 98. And I stand by that. So that's all I wanted to say. I wanted to update you guys on what Babolat actually means when they sell matched rackets. And I appreciate being notified of this in my comments because it was in the comments of that video that people actually pointed out, Babolat doesn't really mean matched when they say matched. So thank you guys for letting me know. And I feel like there's really nothing else to do but for me to eat my words. So let's go get some alphabet soup. By the way, I tried getting some the other day. It's actually surprisingly hard to find. I went to like five grocery stores. I thought they'd just have alphabet soup, but it's really hard to find. And I think I have to go to Walmart. I went to all these other places. They just don't have it. Anyway, I got some stuff to do right now, but we'll come back. We'll come back and we'll get that alphabet soup and I will eat my words. <laughs> so dumb, but I feel like it's fair. All right, I'll be back. What's up guys? This is an interesting video because it's been done in a few different pieces. So it's nighttime now and it's several days later. I didn't want to cop out and go to Amazon to buy alphabet soup either, but here I am at Walmart. I'll take the phone in there, film a little bit, but I don't have all that much time in there. It's 1030, they close at 11 and they used to be 24 seven, I think before COVID. Anyway, it's time to find some alphabet soup so I can eat my words, which is a terrible pun, but consider it a form of entertainment, but also a little punishment. And also just me holding myself accountable. If I say something wrong, I'd like to eat my words again in the future. Let's get out of the car. So many things. 
I've already found it though. <laughs> Spending big money on this video, you guys gotta help me out. Oh wait, that's the wrong, that's the wrong price tag. How much is this stuff? Huh. Okay, I have no idea how much it is, but it's probably less than $2. Alright, that actually took a long time, but it was $1.72, no tax because it's food. And it's kind of funny that I got this from A to Z soup, because I almost went to Amazon, which is also A to Z in the logo. Nice, look at this sick Tesla. In a Walmart parking lot? Man, it's pink, this guy would love my racket. All right, back in the car. That took way longer than it should have. Oh, all that for one can of soup, you guys. Wow, what time is it now? 11.16? Eh, I'll be all right. Well, mission accomplished. A to Z. It says it's great topped with Pepperidge Farm goldfish crackers. Well, I won't be doing that. One serving of veggies. <laughs> okay, tomato. Yeah, the ingredients don't seem too bad. This is a condensed can, so I gotta mix it with like water or milk. Maybe I'll do both. All right, on to the next part, which may or may not be the same day. We're just stitching this video together, one clip at a time. All right, you know what? I've gotten tired of waiting, so let's make this happen. I think this will be fine. There it is. And it says plus one can of water or for creamier soup. Do a little half and half, huh? Unsweetened almond milk. And a little cheese, because I'm so gourmet. That's enough. Oh, so close. I should probably stir that. I'll heat it up first a little bit. All right, the cheese is melting, so that's a good sign. Soup takes a long time to cool down. So we'll put some more cheese in here. <laughs> Honestly, this whole thing is really cheesy anyway. I was hoping I could dig out each letter in here and spell something like I'm sorry or I was wrong, but that's gonna take a long time. So maybe I'll have to do that in a separate video in the future. I'm sure I'll be wrong about something again, but until then, this will have to suffice for eating my words. Because we got the whole alphabet in here, I'm sure. And for now, that's good enough. Not bad. I'll finish this. And then I'll finish this video. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put some cayenne pepper in here. Mm-hmm.